Well, hello everybody. Uh, Richard, Richard Radio Adventure, Adventures and uh, Resonant Frequencies Amateur Radio Podcast. Um, what we're looking at right here is my, my new, um, well, it's newest, but I've had it a while. Uh, MMDVM hat, du dual band guy or duplex guy. And I haven't really had a chance to fool with it yet, but this is a good opportunity for me to show you all a little bit about updating the software on these things. Whereas the firmware was already updated on this when I got it, um, it's still running version 3 of 5 star. So, what I'm going to need to do is uh, go ahead and flash a new card with the newest version of 5 star on it. But first, let's talk a couple minutes about SD cards. So, here's what we're talking about when we uh, are talking about the SD cards. Uh, if you can see, one on the left, 32 gigs, with other on the right, 16 gigs. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, you want to use the uh, 32 gig for flashing 5 star. But, the truth is, that's a pretty low quality card. Uh, the only reason I have it is I used it temporarily uh, while I, when I upgraded and then I ordered some more cards. What we uh, ordered were more like the one on the right side, which is a good quality card. Let me see if I can get closer to it without messing the picture up. Too bad. There we go. As you can see, it's a higher quality card. And the reason it's got marker on it is because that's the uh, card that came out of my first Pi-Star uh, hotspot. This one, on the other hand, I've had for years. You know, uh, those of you that have followed me, y'all know that I had uh, some Santa clips lay laying around that I used to record with. And that was put in there to extend the amount of music I could put inside. Uh, actually, I think that came out of where he is. There he is. This sense of clip. That came out of this sense of clip. And it's been retired because I ordered some new ones and got them in that were like this. I got three of them for less than 20 bucks. You can't touch them for that in, the, uh, in Walmart. But we also purchased this item, which is actually a USB SD card uh, reader. So you push, you plug it in, have your SD cards in there, and this one does dual. It does the full size ones in the micro. And then you're set. All you have to do is stick the SD card in it. Plug it into the computer, and you're ready to start burning. Okay, friends and neighbors, here you, here you can see we're on the desktop now. Uh, seems like every time something uh, I get ready to do something, i got to answer the phone. However, uh, as you can tell, uh, this is P3, which uh, is number three in the fleet. Uh, it's the newest, but uh, newest one. And as you can tell, uh, the hat firmware has been updated here already. When I by when I received it, it had already been updated. Uh, here, you know, we got all my other information. I don't care if y'all have my number because if you take it, <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised. Anyway, so uh, what we've got here is you can see we're already set up on these two networks which uh, TGIF is in the future we're starting to work on the uh, YSF link also however even though we've begun to work on this stuff we have not yet uh, updated the software we're still using 3.4.17 it shipped with that version um, We've talked before, that's, uh, that's P2, and he's currently using the 4.1.2 version. Uh, I'm finding differences in the kernel versions, though. That's uh, kind of weird, because uh, 
flashed them off of the same file. However, you see this one here is also 4.1.2. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go ahead and bring this one up to 4.1.2, which it's currently still at 3.4.17. And the reason for this is, uh, if we go back to here, going over to the admin screen, um, this one is the experimental one. I use this one for doing experiments on different stuff, and you can see I got all kinds of stuff in here. And initially, it was D-Starlink, because... I didn't yet have a DMR radio, but at this time we've got TGIF, um, D plus and D star plus and Brandmeister. We're currently hooked into the UH, US LHS reflector, which is run by a friend of mine over at Linux and the Ham Shack podcast. He, uh, we've got a reflector up there. We're testing, doing stuff and trying to figure out what we're going to do with it or he's going to do with it. Uh, I got plans of my own. But we also have all this other stuff going on. This is the one I use every day. And it's pretty much uh, Brandmeister only at this time. Mostly because I do the changes on the other one. However, you ever had any questions about that Brandmeister uh, <laughs> API? We'll talk about that in a future video. However, this is the one I use every day. So, we're going to go back to the one that's the case, which is number three. And this virgin number. So, uh, the first thing we need to do is go download the software. Now, if you read right down here, it will tell you what version you need for your particular hotspot. Uh, if it's running on this hardware, you download these versions. Uh, I'm kind of lucky. All I have to do is download the RPI and uh, I already have a copy. But just for good measure, we'll go ahead and grab this one real quick. Send it where it needs to go. Well, for the purposes of this video, I think we'll just send it to the desktop. I can move it later. If the computer is going to cooperate. All right. So we sent it on over there. And we're going to, before we go to update this, we're going to uh, go to admin. Well, we're already in admin. We're going to go over to update. And it'll take a second for it to get there. Uh, yeah, it might take a second to get there. Okay, we're going to go over here to update, which is actually, yeah, it's update. And we want to update the system. Now, I try to keep all my systems up to date, uh, whether it's my computers, radios. I just recently did uh, firmware flash on my handheld and that kind of stuff. But I try and keep them up to date. So we're probably not going to get any updates on uh, in this particular case. Plus the fact I've gone to leaving my hotspot hotspots on all the time. And it's my understanding that updates do kind of happen by themselves in the middle of the night. So as soon as we're finished running this update, which it's taking its time uh, finishing up, We'll go on to the next step. So for now, for the moment, I guess we will just pause. Okay, so we're now complete with that. Next thing I I would do, and this is the way I do it, y'all. You can do it any way you want to, is go over to uh, the backup restore screen and save a copy of the configuration. I will tell you why we're doing that, and when we get back. Uh, when we get to that point. Okay. So we should have it backed up at this point. Let me go ahead and hit it. Oh, there it goes. Um, we're going to go ahead and save it. Uh, yeah, those particular icons are a little bit flaky. Uh, you can see I have previous updates for uh, this one already up in there. So we're going to save it. Now, we've uh, 
saved a copy of that. We've done the update so that uh, all the files and stuff are current. So now what we're going to do is we're going we're going to go ahead and flash a copy of that. Uh, go ahead and flash a copy of PyStar onto one of the new SD cards. Okay, so we brought up the window for File Explorer, and we're fixing to insert that reader I showed y'all a little bit ago with a card in it, if it'll go do its thing. And as you can tell, it jumped right on up here. This is actually a Sansa clip I have plugged up right now. And we went ahead and opened it, another one anyway. But uh, F, where'd it go? <laughs> And that's what the that's the kind of thing that happens when you have a semi live show going on. Uh, I say semi live. Uh, so we're on the uh, thumb drive that has the uh, has the SD card in it at this point. So in my case, I'm I've been doing computers since the days of you know hard formats and everything else, and we need to format the card. So we're going to format the card, but instead of quick format, uh, I normally use a hard format, which you would turn that off to make that happen. But you should always, I feel you should always format new media before you use it to avoid problems. Unless, of course, you purchase something that has uh, software pre-installed on it and need to hang on to that. So now we formatted the card. And we're going to go ahead and close that, and we're going to open a program called Etcher. Uh, Etcher is easy enough, and this is we're running this on a Windows machine at this time. So uh, Etcher is a it, it's and it, partially free. It's one of those things you can do the basic stuff, uh, but you have to buy a license or something to you know that kind of thing. Uh, it's one of the reasons I went to Linux initially and hope to be back there soon. So, uh, we're going to, it's pretty easy. Once you bring it up, you've got your media in the computer and you want to flash a file onto that SD card. So, either you have the file or you're flashing it directly from the internet. We have the file on our computer, so we're going to click right here. And then it's going to ask us what the target is right after we go ahead and tell it we want version 4 of PyStar RPI. So now we give it a second and it should come up select target. Now that we have select target, we're going to go ahead and click that. We're going to point to the card reader which is this one, and select. And then we're going to go ahead and flash it. Now this could take a little time. The reason I didn't do a hard format is because it takes a long time. If y'all decide to do that, go ahead and uh, get up, go get yourself something to drink, uh, whatever you might want to do. So I'm going to pause this until Etcher's finished burning this disk image onto the SD card. So, okay, kids, we've uh, we've moved it over to, or we have flashed it to the SD card. There's one last thing we need to do before we go ahead and take the SD card and put it into the hotspot. Now, earlier I had you all save... Uh, that particular PyStar configuration, which is the one we're currently using. So we want to take a copy of that and put it over here on the boot uh, directory in the PyStar, or at least on the uh, on the card. Now the reason we're doing that is is that if you boot it up properly. The uh, configuration that you saved earlier will be put on the PyStar when the new version is uh, applied. So, 
we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go ahead and close this and close this. And we're going to go ahead and move the card over to the uh, hotspot. And then we're going to reboot it. Now, one thing I need to warn you of is that it's going to take some time for the uh, new copy of the operating system and the configuration file to get in place. So this is another one of those times when you need to go get you something to drink, sit down, watch TV, uh, get you a snack if you needed, and we'll be right back. And there you go, folks. Um, we have the new version of Pi Star on the uh, on the hotspot. As you can tell, this is P3, which is uh, the one we've been working on. Uh, most of the stuff is back. Hey, we can go take a look at configuration. There were a couple things that didn't show back up, but that just happens because of the config file not being not having those items in it. The Wi-Fi is up. The Wi-Fi is up. The basic information is back. We're set up for DMR mode, and we're good to go. Let me w let you tell you one more time. When you go to bring this up, uh, the new version, the uh, new copy of the operating system, um, it will take somewhere between five and ten minutes. Five and ten minutes. So just kind of walk away and uh, let it do its thing. And when you get back, you'll be good. At one point, I uh, was upgrading one of them. And I didn't let it wait long enough, so it never finished filling the configuration file back in. But I went back and did it again. Um, I went back and did it again. And left it alone until it was finished. I was sure it was finished and everything was there. We also had a problem while we were doing this. I was telling y'all earlier about make sure you thoroughly format those SD cards. Um, it turns out that the one I was using, the form, it would not format. So I tried a couple of times, uh, thought I had it burned to it and put it in, tried to start her up and it wasn't happening. These are little things that can happen. However, at this point, we are set up, we are good to go. We're fixing to start testing and move in a lot of the modifications that were over on P2, the one I use for experimentation, uh, get that moved over. So I hope this helps. We're going to try and, uh, try and get more of these out. Uh, I will tell you that there's a little bit of a learning curve on this. Uh, I really didn't have to do all this stuff the last time I made videos. So with that, y'all go out and be the best hams you can be. And we'll see y'all next time. Oh yeah, wait for the contact information.